Very good evening as ever. I'm delighted that you could join us. Uh, fans of both football persuasions here in Sheffield, I'm sure plenty of owls uh, looking to kick on the debate that's been going on in that part of the city for, uh, well, more than a, a week or so. Uh, and Sheffield United fans uh, eager to hear about some of the plans to kick on the success that Sheffield United are having at the moment. I should say, before we even get around to introducing our guests, that in my experience, which is fairly long, uh, football does tend to go in cycles. We all like, would like it if our team could succeed all of the time, but uh, alas, that is seldom possible in football, and most of all in this part of the world in, in recent years. So success has to be enjoyed. And when it's the other way around, you have to look and say it's part of a cycle and it will come round again. I hope that has been my party political broadcast finished for tonight. As I introduce a director of Sheffield United, Tarek Hawazli. How are you? I'm very well and thank you for joining us. Thank you. I met you quite recently after a certain game. You were outside uh, enjoying the glow of a certain result, which we might uh, well, reprise in a little, little while. Uh, James Marriott, my other guest here, knows which game that is. A and gift for you, my friend. Uh, thank you very You're much welcome. indeed. Yeah. That's very, very nice. Uh, uh, don't uh, very often get gifts on, the, on this program. So you don't uh, forget us. Yes, yeah. well, thank you very much. And yeah. this colour's red, I suppose. Up the blades. Up the blades. <laughs> for you. And you are a, well, a, f a relatively recent director, recently appointed director of Sheffield United. That's right. You're one of two representatives on the Blades board of Prince Abdullah. That's the right. The joint owner of Sheffield United Football Club. The other one being Yusuf Gian Syracuse, whose <laughs> well name done. I've been practising <laughs> for quite a long time. Well done. And James Marriott. Now, James Marriott is a Sheffield Wednesday supporter who also contributes to the media. Uh, he uh, has his own website called thewednesdayweek.co.uk, which produces blogs on the owls and podcasts on the owls. You're going to do a, a podcast later. Yeah, later there's a team tonight, of six of us all together um, yeah. that do the podcast, which has now kind of become a bit of a web-based thing as well with um, various blogs, although fewer in the last few weeks for some reason. Yeah, there have been a few in the last few weeks because... There have been, well, I, I don't know, I think it's not overstating it to say the fan base has been split over certain issues at Hillsborough for a while. Great expectations following two near misses on promotion through the playoffs. This season hasn't worked out as planned so far. The emphasis being on so far. And you were at the steering group meeting. Periodi yeah. Periodically these take place where the chairman, Dave Ponchansiri, hosts a, a long evening of... Uh, question and answer. What was the yeah. mood, do you feel, of last night's meeting before we come on to Tarek? Um, I think it was what you'd probably expect um, of a meeting of that sort with the, the situation being as it is with the, the club, both kind of on and off the field. There have been some you know, off the field questions raised over the last few weeks. On the field, things haven't been going so well. So I think there was a, a feeling of, of concern. There was a, an eagerness for, for answers really about where we're at and, and, and where we're heading. Um, it, was, it was a long night. It was five hours altogether. It was about half past 11 when we, uh, when we got out. Um, but I think it, it addressed some of the concerns. Um, ultimately, the talking's got to be done on the pitch. Mm, indeed. Uh, was the feeling, of pe albeit that it was a late hour, did people leave the meeting in a better mood than they arrived, do you feel, or I, not? I, I think so. I think the, for me, probably the biggest headline that, that, that kind of came out of it was the chairman was um, unequivocal in his support for, for Carlos as manager. Um, his quote was, he is 100% behind Carlos. And then he thought about it for a second and said, I'm 200% behind Carlos. Um, which either means he really is, or it means he'll be sacked on Monday, <laughs> depending which way that goes. Um, and that got a round of applause from the from the room, and, and, and you know, myself included. And you know, I've been someone that's really questioned whether or not we're going in the right direction under under Carlos. Um, and I felt for the last couple of weeks maybe it is time for for a change. But we came away from that meeting at least with some degree of resolution. Clarity. Yeah, Carlos is, is our manager, and if that's the case, then uh, as fans, we've got to get behind him now. OK, well said. Um, later in the show, we're also going to be hearing from another supporter who's taken the opposite side to you. Uh, similar background, Charles Duxbury, uh, who also writes about football. and He's a contributor to the Sheffield Wednesday programme, and he's been... Uh, solidly a supporter of Carlos yeah. of Alia, and he was equally delighted. But we'll hear Charles's view a bit later. Tarek, um, 
Well, it's all sweetness and light, isn't it? Uh, you must think that being a football club director is, uh, I don't know, glory, glory, glory. No, no, absolutely not. But it's uh, good times these days. But, yeah. um, you know, we, we, we stay grounded, we're humble. We take one game at a time. But we're very happy, excited about the direction of the club. Um, and uh, from ownership all the way down to Chris and to the fan base, we're very happy for our fans. And uh, you're always welcome to, you know, come on to the other side. I'm, I'm, I, hear you live, right I, I hear you live in this side of town. That right. might be true. Yeah. <laughs> he, you regret saying that <laughs> in the conversation before the program. You've, you've, blown, the you've yeah. blown his cover. Yeah. Um, you represent the Prince specifically. There was a re reshuffle on the Blaze Ball quite recently. Uh, Kevin McCabe has done a great job o over very many years. Absolutely. With commitment absolutely in the right place for Sheffield United. His two sons stepped off the board. Yep. And, and, and you and Yusuf uh, stepped onto the board representing Prince Abdullah. Yeah, I actually joined last year. Yeah. Um, so I, I, but Yusuf did step on this year. And we both represent Prince Abdullah. And um, you also have Martin Green and uh, Jeremy and Stephen Bed Bettis and uh, Prince Abdullah himself. So that's the board right now of Sheffield United. What does that involve then for you, for you personally? In, in, how often do you speak to the Prince? I speak to him at least once a week, you know, uh, if not more, depending on the, mm. his schedule and my schedule. But whenever he needs to speak to me, I'm available. You spoke to him today, in fact. I did. I that, did. That was to say, I'm coming on this show. What shall I say and what shall I not say? <laughs> uh, you know, I just, uh, we had some things we had to discuss. Uh, January is right around the corner. You mentioned that word. You've preempted. You've brought forward in the agenda a question. No, feel free. Uh, and, and I'm going to come to it. I'm going to leave people down. They know what the question is. That's right. But let me just say, first of all, and this is a, a neutral view that I've had for some time, when I've seen Prince Abdullah getting stick from some supporters saying, well, what's he brought to the club? What has he put in? Nothing. I remember going to his introduction, his unveiling in 2013. Yeah. Um, and I, I do remember a figure of roughly around 15 million pounds being talked about shortly after that as to what he'd actually put in in those early times. Is, am I about right there? Prince Abdullah has invested substantial amounts into the club and um, we're very happy with his commitment. And I think uh, Kevin's very happy and the fans are very happy and he continues to be very, very much involved. Yes. I, my figure there, am I roughly in the ballpark of what, what's been invested by the Prince initially? In the, in the, and then, of course, it doesn't involve you because you weren't on the board at the time. The money went to waste somehow. It didn't achieve the desired effect. Sheffield United stayed in the third tier, tier for longer than they would have liked. Yeah, you know, we don't say waste, um, but, you know, we're very happy where we're, we're heading right now. Things are very positive for us, and uh, we're looking, uh, hopefully, to make a strong push to get to the Premier League. That's where we want to be. That's where we deserve to be, um, and that's, that's, that's the direction we're heading towards. Okay, well, following that initial investment, there appeared to be a, a period of a lull where I think when just before and just after Chris Wilder was appointed where Kevin McCabe appeared to be, whether I'm right or not, appeared to be leading the club again as the, yeah. the, the, the more dominant partner. Uh, Is that fair to say? Dominant, I wouldn't say, but I would say that uh, Prince Abdullah had ministerial duties, which had to take him away from actually being involved day to day, as opposed to now, where he is involved uh, and very active and is on the board and, and heading the board, if you will. He so was the Saudi sports minister, wasn't he? Was, he was, yeah, absolutely. Which he no longer is. No, so that has freed him up to become more active. Is that, do, you, do you think he will become more active in an investment way to Sheffield United now as well? We as the board ownership are very committed to Chris and the direction he's taking us. We, we have a saying, uh, you know, in America, you say, in God we trust on the dollar bills. Yes. Over here, I say, in Chris we trust. So Chris Wilder's, you know, direction, we're supporting him. We're behind him 100%. question is just how many of those dollar bills you give him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you walked straight into that one, didn't you? No, no. I mean, uh, we're, 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 we're going to make sure that, that we, we put our best foot forward, without a doubt. 
Is this, and we're talking now perhaps prematurely about a possible promotion bid, but nevertheless, possible promotion bid is accurately putting it. You're third in the table, only behind Neil Warnock's, you know, Neil Warnock, only between Neil, behind Neil Warnock's Cardiff on goal difference and in touch with the leaders' wolves. Is, is, is that a situation that you anticipated? Alan, it, you know, we're taking it one game at a time. It's still really That's early. That's what footballers yeah, we, we, it, 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 say. It's just the truth, though. You take it one game at a time. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you do the hard work, uh, you know, you trust in the, the vision. It's, 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 it's a team effort and, and, and it starts from the top down and that's what we're doing. And, and, and obviously our goal, just like everyone else's, is to be in the Premier League and we're happy where we are after 13. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a great position to be in. But it could be, looking in from the outside, an unanticipated uh, opportunity to get into the Premier League ahead of where the club might have scheduled itself to be. Is it important then to take that chance while it's there in terms of investing in players we, or making money available? We want to make sure that we invest in players both internally as in the academy, make sure that we invest in the players that we have on our squad, uh, such as David Brooks, uh, Coots and so forth, and the whole team, and then make sure that Coach Chris is supported in anything he needs as long as we can. Yeah, well, that, that, that's a, I would be naive to think that you were going to throw a figure at me in the, uh, for the January window, but Blades fans can rest assured that- They the, can rest assured. The, the Prince is going to be- we, 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 The Prince and Kevin, ownership together. is active, the board is active, and, 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 and we're very supportive of Coach Chris. Right. Well, okay. We'll come back to these. Uh, you no know, worries. I know the, the harder Drill me all you want, Alan. Yeah. Drill me all you want. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> the, the harder okay. questions have been have, have, have probably been and gone, but we will will come back to this. Because Anytime. It is a, a situation that I certainly couldn't have anticipated. Even though Tony Curry sat where you are, Blades legend, and said to me in the first week of the season, "We're going to finish runners up." Oh, uh, to Sheffield Wednesday, I think he said, "No, no, he didn't." <laughs> um, we'll uh, we'll take that. <laughs> You'll take that. We'll have you're, that. You'll happily finish behind the Blades, will you, this season in second place? I, so I, I'd like, love both teams to go up. Yeah. Which, 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 which who finishes first and second is, uh, is a run. That would be very good yeah. for the city. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, just going back to last night's steering group uh, meeting, James, about even you as somebody that advocated a, a change of, of head coach or manager, whatever you call him, even you said to me before we came on air, the best thing about the meeting was the statement that Dapon Shansiri was 100% behind Carlos Carvalho. Yeah, so absolutely. Is, that seems to be an odd thing for you to say as somebody who'd advocated change. Um, I think for, for me it's been uh, an awkward few weeks. I've been one of Carlos's biggest fans um, and I've, I've almost felt a little bit like um, I've been cheating on a partner by <laughs> talking particularly in the media about how I think it's time for uh, for a change and, yeah. and, and the actual thought of that that tweet appearing um, you know that that story breaking if he was to leave I think would actually be tinged with a bit of sadness because he's been brilliant for for our club um, we you know will will always whenever he does move on we will always be thankful for him for for a, an amazing first season a very good second season um, I, I think from my point of view it had just reached a point whereby I, I didn't really know where where we were heading under his direction it, it felt like we needed some new ideas um, it still does feel like we need some new ideas but as fans we obviously don't make those decisions um, and, and in every the piece that I wrote in the star about it ultimately concluded that what, what I think and what any other Wednesday fan thinks is is uh, worthwhile, but it is ultimately irrelevant. It's, it's what the chairman thinks that, that matters. He seems to have uh, killed the uh, raging debate, Stone yeah, Dead, with that emphatic statement. Yeah. And I think the other relevant point about it is that he's certainly different to any other chairman I've known, in that he wouldn't give a glib vote of confidence as it's interpreted. It's normally the kiss of death. 100% behind the manager, how often have we seen it? A sacking follows swiftly. You know that, or you feel you know, that this guy's different. That, it means that he's there for the foreseeable future. He's, there's been opportunities in the in the past, even in, in yeah. year one of the, the projects with, with Carlos, there was an opportunity after you know the first kind of going into the first couple of international breaks where maybe the results weren't going the way that we wanted them to. Uh, 
you know, we, we know another another chairman at a different football club may have pulled the trigger, you know, right then. There'd been other opportunities. This summer would have been a, an opportunity to make a change, and I don't think there'd been many fans that would have argued with it if, if he had have done that. Mm -hmm. And he stood by his man right through. And I think when he says that, that he is our manager, he's 100% behind him and he's going to see the season through, I think he's, I think he's telling the truth. And, and, and for us, that, that galvanises us as as fans, whichever side of the fence you're, you're on, um, and even people that have, have been making the mind up, it doesn't matter now. You know, he's he's staying. We've got to get behind him. We've got to get behind the team. That's that's our job now as as, as fans, and that's what we can contribute now to, to turning around this this dip that we're going through. It's certainly admirable and refreshing on the part of the chairman and the owner. Uh, perhaps less so is the reaction to uh, the prices of the kit, the, the kit that came out late, the shirts, I'll talk about that with you later, and various off-field things, which I feel a matter of concern, I wrote a column in the Sheffield Telegraph, Sheffield Star, about that I feel he needs specialised football help, uh, rather than taking so many of the big calls on himself. But I don't, I'll get your view on that. Talking of managers, Chris Wilder can do no wrong. Uh, you, I mean, you are lucky to have this guy, aren't you? We, we're very happy to have Chris Wilder, mm. absolutely. I mean, his, 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 his management has, has just exceeded, I think, any, everything that Blades fans could have wished for. His management, but he's a good man, and mm. uh, his heart, he's a Blade through and through. Mm. Um, he grew up a Blade, you know, I mean, it, it, so we're, we're very happy with him. Mm. And uh, more importantly, he's happy with us. So it's a blessing. Indeed, he is. And how, how important is it, though, that you as a board match his ambitions because okay he gets linked with other jobs all the time and I think United fans have just got to get used to the fact that comes with the territory of having a much coveted any successful match. coach any successful coach for any successful team will always have these rumors but we're, we're very happy and yeah. uh, and and we're working together as one hand yeah I don't see him leaving any time soon but also I know his naked ambition you know and how important is it that the club matches that ambition he's he's not a man for treading water we're, we have very honest conversations. He's a blade through and through, and we support him 100%. Mm. We have one ambition, to get to the Premier League together. Okay, and let's just go back to 2013 when Prince Abdullah came on the board and I had a conversation with him. The only one I've had, actually, okay. so far, but I, I, I enjoyed it, where he made it very, very clear uh, in terms of his motivation for getting involved that the only way it was going to pay off for him as an investment with Sheffield United against the Premier League? Nothing's changed. That's the only way that it's going to be a success for him? Yeah. We just, I mean, we, all of our interests are aligned. The yeah. fans, the, the players, the coaches, ownership, we want to get to the Premier League. Yeah. And um, fingers crossed, knock on wood, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, one step at a time. You've known him for some time, haven't you? I have. Through your real estate business uh, property yeah business. I, I, I was in private equity and uh, I'm in private equity real estate that's my main job and how much is I know he watches all the game how much is he enjoying what he's seeing this season? he is as passionate as they come uh, sports is his greatest passion after family and and, and 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 you know God I mean sports is everything to him he watches every single game be it in LA be it in Riyadh be it anywhere he is I mean, he's, he, he, it's very important. Not just yeah. the Blades, but, but Premier League games as well. He's very, very involved. Yeah, and yourself, um, since you came on the... I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm growing. But yeah, yeah still, uh, we, we've got a lot of smart football brains. I, I, I tend to stay uh, in the backgrounds and let them do their job. Yeah. You mentioned, um, we were talking about... But I'm happy about what the, what the ladies are doing. The, 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 you haven't mentioned the ladies. I uh, haven't yet. Yeah, no. and then not they're yet. doing well. Uh, you know, uh, so 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 not just the men, but the ladies are doing well as well. So we're very happy about that as well. Yeah, that's a, a recently formed uh, addition to the Sheffield United Football Club, that's the right. ladies team. That's right. Doing well. And just in the last minute before the break, um, you know, you can invest by keeping a star player just as you can invest by signing Absolutely. one. And you mentioned David Brooks and. United fans by nature are quite cynical about. Oh, we're gonna, you know we're going to sell another one. Are you pretty equivocal about unequivocal about this that he's staying? David Brooks is um, he's a cornerstone of what we're building, and um, you know we 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 think we've made that very clear. Um, we're not selling him. Coach Chris has said that, mm. and um, you know we we hope that he's going to be a blade uh, for many years to come, especially uh, you know you know knock on wood.
You know? Yeah, I can't find any. Can you? I can't <laughs> I'm, see any. I'm, I'm thinking about knocking on uh, yeah. uh, right here. Right. No, no. Oh, that's it. That will do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You nearly knocked the backdrop down. I yeah. <laughs> hope you're still here in five minutes. Tarek, uh, do join us for part two. Uh, and with James, another James, James Gregg, and also with Charles Duxbury. Join us in five. See you then.